In this clip, Docker Captain Michael Irwin and I answer a question about backups and how to do them in a swarm cluster with databases. All right, two more questions and then we got to run. Um, what are the best practices for what? schema changes and data migrations to a live database for applications running on Docker Swarm cluster? Ooh, this is a good one. Is there any Docker image to use just to execute the necessary SQL statements from the migration and then exit? Yes, mm -hmm. another Postgres container. Yep. <laughs> so uh, think about a Postgres container, right? What's in there? Well, it's the Postgres database and then the Postgres clients, right? The, the CLI and all the, you know, the, the import, export, dump, re re restore, whatever the term is for Postgres's stuff, right? Um, so if you want another container to mount in some import stuff, like some schema updates, and then you want it to, instead of running the daemon for the Postgres server to run the client against a remote container over the network, that's what you do. In fact, there's an example of that. What? And, you know, you get one guess on where I'm going to go in my Docker uh, dog versus cat repo. So Ooh. in dog versus cat, um, inside of my ghost, let's see, let's do the ghost, stack ghost, stack. Oh, here we go. No, not the SQL light. Wait, and you have a ghost Docker wrap. I just saw that. Go by to Yes, I could do that too. But I'm not sure which one it's it's based on. All right, so on this one. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. So let me zoom in here so we can. Uh, so basically, uh, doing schema updates to me is exactly the same type of work as doing restores or backups. Because what your your goal is is that you have files you need to get either in or out, and you need to talk to the database and use client utilities to talk to that client data that database. And you really have a couple of choices. One is you you execute you do a Docker exec in the container that the SQL server is running. Um, that is a little tougher in a cluster when you're talking about Swarm because now you got to figure out where does that container live and I have to go find the node where it lives and I have to run Docker exec on that container there, right? What I prefer to do is to just use the overlay networks and talk to it using the client utilities over the network from anywhere, using it, creating another service, making sure it's on the same overlay network and then figuring out how to get to that database and do what I got to do. So in my example here, it's pretty easy and contrived, but essentially... This is a database to run a website. So it's running the official MySQL image, and then it's mounting the database like normal. But I run this other service that simply overwrites the command. So if you see here, it overwrites the command with a one-line shell uh, loop, essentially, that will then run the MySQL dump utility against a remote DNS name. And if I all the way over, you'll see it's it knows the host name of the other service because that's the service name. So it knows it's always going to be called DB and it's going to make a file using a nice date value that you can use in a shell script. And then I, I'm really lame because I'm using a one-liner shell script and I just sleep it for whatever that is, five minutes. No, that's 15 minutes. What is that? An hour. That's an hour. Yeah, hour. I think it's an hour. Sorry. <laughs> We're good at math. <laughs> Um, and, and it actually brings in the Docker secrets value as the password so that you don't have to have the password hard coded. If you're using Docker swarm secrets, it will gain it that way. So that's a really little easy example. And then it mounts, uh, a different volume that I'm using Rexray to store that off disk. So it's using Rexray to find digital ocean block storage, and then it mounts a different volume that's just for backups. And it, it, there's nothing fancy about it. It doesn't have advanced uh, you know, monitoring or logic to it. It just simply runs a dump command, puts it in a file every hour, and then repeats. And that hopefully will get you enough of the way to the, con the conceptual issues around how do I talk to my database to do things like schema updates. So one thing I'll just add to you. Yeah. So since we just uh, had a 12-factor talk in our local meetup here recently, uh, one of the... Uh, and if you haven't heard of 12 factor, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. Um, I'm going to post a link to this specific pillar, but there's actually a, a pillar. Uh, one of the factors is exactly on this, that when doing 
um, database backups or schema changes, that kind of stuff, that those are, should be um, kind of one-off functions that, that run. And so in this case, uh, Brett's got another service that's doing the, the backup. Um, in, in your case, you may have a, a service that's doing the, the schema update. One of the things that, uh, so I, we've got a team that, that's doing something very similar. Um, in the stack file that he's got there, he's got the deploy restart policy to 600 seconds. So if it died 10 minutes later, it's going to, it'll automatically reschedule. And that makes sense for a backup. You want that to just keep going. Um, for a schema, you may not want that. And so you can set your restart policy to have a condition of none. And so it's never going to restart, but then maybe the next time you do your deploy, um, you change environment variable or something like that to say, here's a version number, some way to trigger it to, to go. Um, to launch it from there. Thanks for watching. You can click subscribe and the notification bell to get an alert when I go live so you can join and ask your DevOps and Docker questions. You can watch some of my other videos over there and you can do what I'm about to do and just go take a nap. <laughs>